Hello and welcome to our complete, unabridged, exhaustive and fully comprehensive guide to dining on the brand new Princess Cruises Sky Princess. We've just returned from her seven night inaugural voyage from Athens to Barcelona and I'm telling you now, fitting all the nosh this enormous ship has to offer in such a short time was a challenge, but one we accepted with no expense spared as we ate our way through the choices that are part of your fare and all the premium dining, including the expensive but supreme dining experience, the Chef's Table Lumiere. So come with us now as we chew over the options and gnaw our way through several thousand calories, all in the name of research. Well, someone had to, didn't they? And we did. Mm, to make all this gluttony worthwhile, please subscribe to our channel so we may afford to join a gym to regain our lithe athletic physiques, chiseled six-packs and self-confidence, or just to buy some more elasticated trousers. Thank you. First off, breakfast. There are a variety of ways to break your fast and we're going to show you just how many. After all, there's been a few long hours since that last midnight snack, hasn't it? Firstly, room service offers a serious lazy way to reach food without getting properly dressed or leaving the bedchamber. Choice purists may find this option a little limiting though, as the menu is not as fully featured as other options. In fact, it's quite small actually, but you can order using Princess's medallion technology, which is convenient, and more fun than a paper door hanger you always forget to put out in time and a biro that never works. Venturing out of our mini suite, well, we are luxury cruisers, darling. We like to start the day off a little more serenely than the traditional bun fight at the main breakfast buffet, and on Sky, there are several little areas that offer tranquility with your toast. The International Cafe serves these breakfast muffins similar to those found in that infamous fast food place I can't quite remember the name of. Calories soon mount with a variety of pastries and cakes here, though. I resisted the Nutella donut. So send me congratulations, and I'll get Helen to pat me on the back. And I didn't sneak back later either, which is a real risk, so please tread carefully. Quieter still is the fancily named Bistro sur la Mer, which offers coffee, pastries and an unruffled place to fully wake yourself without the traditional buffet food scrum. It was so very quiet in here though, we wondered how long this venue would last as a breakfast option. Princess would be better keeping the French theme and offering, say, a creperie or similar premium breakfast experience here. Just our opinion, but we think it would work very well. Slightly more active, but just as well mannered, is the main dining rooms, where you can have full table service and pretend you're in Downton Abbey. This is very enjoyable, especially on a sea day when you don't have to hurry off the ship. Finally, if you have the energy and fancy a bit of a challenge, then of course the default venue for breakfast will always be the World Fresh Marketplace. Hmm, catchy name there, Princess. Or the pastry shop, otherwise known at its entrance as Horizon Bistro, but also known on the ship's little pocket map as the pastry shop, which in reality is in the middle of the Horizon Bistro, which is essentially an extension of the World Fresh Marketplace, but with taller tables and chairs. At least I think it is. Here's an idea, Princess. Why not simplify the whole naming thing and just call this whole area something more simple or at least memorable? It's not logical for a simpleton like me. We always end up just saying, we'll meet you in the horizon. <laughs> it's much simpler. Anyway, I digress. Absolutely oodles of choice here, as you'd imagine, and the food is particularly good for a breakfast buffet. And at last, Princess have obviously listened to customer feedback and given us real crockery. Yay! Instead of that dreadful plastic picnic crockery on the Grand Class ships. Good on you, Princess. This pleased me more than you'll probably know. It just makes the whole experience so much more upmarket and the food tastes better. Yes, food tastes better on real plates. It's been scientifically researched and proven. Well, by me. Despite the crockery triumphs, we always find the problem here to be twofold. 
Finding a free table when it's really busy, and I would avoid the hour before excursions are due to leave. And overeating. Just remember, when eating that fourth pastry just because it's there, lunch is only a couple of hours away. Lunch can never come too soon, especially as you've not eaten since that Nutella donut from the International Cafe an excruciatingly distant 30 minutes ago. For the luxury traveller among us, the Sanctuary provides a lunch menu that offers healthy choices and dishes not found anywhere else on the ship, which are included in your Sanctuary charge. Mind you, if you still fancy something a little naughtier, you can still secretly order a burger and fries instead. Or as well, like I did. Shh, it was for the purposes of this dining guide only, okay? Alfredo's is the feature pizzeria on board and is included in your voyage fare. Princess claim the pizzas here are the best pizzas at sea. Although we really enjoy these pizzas, much more than the ones on Sky Sisters, Sapphire and Crown, I would say they are amongst the best at sea. Other cruise lines do exceptional pizzas too. Naming no names, Silver Sea. And in order for Princess to claim this, they'd have to have had try out every other pizza from every other cruise line. So with that in mind, and the fact we're being a touch pedantic, we wouldn't like to verify the claim as true. But they are very good indeed and worth a visit. Down in the International Cafe, there are paninis and other breaded goods on offer. Should you wish for something a little quicker or less formal for lunch than a sit-down meal? Think Starbucks, but bosher. If you fancy lunch around the pool, or you don't feel dressed for it, i.e. you're still in dripping swimwear and a damp towel, then why not grab some fast food from the Salty Dog Grill or Slice Pizzeria? You can get the world-famous Ernesto Burger at the Salty Dog, which is a small charge. You can see that on our Crown Princess review on our channel. Here's a link in the top right corner. One of the main dining rooms obviously offer a sit-down lunch, which I won't elaborate here. The food is always good in the main dining rooms, if you have the time and do not have wet swimwear on and it's almost the same as the evening experience. Just lunchier, if that's a word. Well, a few minutes have passed since lunch and afternoon tea is available. This quintessentially English indulgence can be enjoyed in many places around the ship, but we preferred to spoil ourselves in the sanctuary, where the lovely attendants will wait on you and bring you a selection of terribly obscene cakes and sandwiches. Hmm, I'm sure you'll agree. Compiling a dining guide is such a tough job. Afternoon tea can also be taken in the main dining room, where you'll be served by white-gloved waiters from silver trays full of naughty little sweet and savoury creations. It's all very civilised, and conveniently, the waiters can also clean any snooker balls you need cleaning at the same time. While I'm here and it's mid-afternoon, a quick word about gelato and swirls. Gelato is the Sky Princess's gelato bar, where for a small charge you can sample some of the tasty ice creams, or should I say gelato, and sorbets made fresh on the ship daily by their resident ice cream, sorry gelato, magician. But is it ice cream or is it gelato? Gelato supposedly has a high proportion of milk and a lower proportion of cream and eggs. It's churned at a lower rate and therefore has less hair and is consequently denser than ice cream. Hmm, but I couldn't tell and I didn't ask. Seems a bit petty to be honest, because regardless, it was bloomin' lovely. Swirls is a small booth situated near the centre pool and serves the soft whippy stuff we all love. Although on our trip the machine wasn't working so they were serving the gelato ice cream here. Teething problems is all. It'll be fine by the time you get on board. I hope. On to the evening options now, and this is where it starts getting very interesting indeed. 
Just make sure you've built a decent appetite. I know it's difficult because there's food everywhere, but things are going to get rather tasty. Buckle up, here we go. There are three main dining rooms on board Sky Princess, all with the customary princess hard to remember names. Soliel, Estrella and Cielo. I think it's Cielo, anyway. Cielo? Cielo? I don't know. Cielo. These are very pretty venues and the food here is very good indeed. Main dining rooms on large ships can be very hit and miss and we've had some brilliant meals and some completely rubbish ones. Thankfully, Princess serve up the good stuff and to be honest, there's not much reason to go premium dining on your voyage at all. The main dining rooms are plenty good enough and offer enough choice that you don't have to spend any more money. But if you do want to spend more, or have a special occasion worth celebrating with a little more panache, here's what the premium dining options look like. Ocean Terrace is the sushi bar situated on deck 7 right in the centre of the piazza. It's a small venue, but the views from the few tiny tables are great. Or you can choose to sit up the bar and watch the chef slice, wrap and make food art from the ingredients that magically appear from a multitude of little drawers that surround him. The sushi is great and it's reasonably priced too. So, worth a visit. Of course, Alfredo's is also open for the evening, but the menu is the same as the lunch menu we offered earlier. So we won't need to cover that again. Do you get that? Need, don't, don't need. Mm. Bistro Sous la Mer is a French bistro style premium venue and brand new to Princess Dining. It's situated off the Piazza on deck seven also, and the decor is fresh and light it has a lovely outdoor area like Alfredo's and is not dogged too much by the ambient noise coming from the piazza if you sit well inside and not round the edges. To be honest though, at 29 US dollars per head, this is the weakest of the premium venues and offers the poorest value in our opinion. The food was very French and very tasty, but the portions were smaller than other comparably priced venues on Sky Princess. That's not that we didn't like it, quite the contrary, but it was probably the only one we'd not return to on a longer voyage. one that we definitely would return to is Sabatini's, the classic princess Italian restaurant. Mamma mia! The venue on Sky is beautiful and much more contemporary than the dated decor in the Sabatini's on Crown and Sapphire. For 25 US dollars, this is in our opinion by far the best value premium dining to be had on Sky Princess. Four generous courses of fabulous Italian food later, you'll not be able to fit another mouthful in, yet you'll be planning to come back at the earliest convenience. Welcome to the Crown Grill, which on Sky now has its own bar attached to it. 
but more about that in our voyage vlog, so please subscribe for more details. The restaurant itself is modern, light and contemporary, but in our opinion is a bit too open plan. In the Grand Class ships, Crown Grill is an intimate dining experience full of little private alcoves and rich dark corners. Here it is the opposite. It's almost an extension of the bar area, but it was nice to hear the live music coming through from the bar. Oops, sorry, wrong clip. That's the karaoke in Princess Live. Ah, here's the right clip. The food was very good indeed, as you would expect. Although, if you've never been to a Crown Grill before and you're expecting fine dining, it's not. It's a very good steak and seafood restaurant but it's not delicate. Tasty, but not delicate. At $29 per head, it's a treat that's not too expensive, although service was a little slow because it looked like the waiting staff was a little thin on the ground the night we went, and you'd expect a much larger diner to waiter ratio in a premium venue. The staff here were rushing about, which seemed uncharacteristic of the Crown Grill experiences we've had on other ships. Well, we just had to try this, didn't we? The chef's table is the most premium dining experience you can have on a princess ship. At 115 US dollars per head on the sky, it gives your wallet a hefty tenderizing, so it had better live up to its lofty price and reputation. We started the evening meeting the maitre d' at the Good Spirits Bar with the other 10 diners before heading off to enrobe ourselves in some rather oversized lab coats and to give our hands a good scrubbing before heading into the galley kitchen. Only a maximum of 12 diners can experience the chef's table luminaire, so if you want to do it, you need to get your name on the waiting list. In the galley kitchen, we met the larger than life head chef, who quite frankly had more energy and enthusiasm than his long working hours and stress levels could afford. Soon the champagne was flowing and the bite-sized hors d'oeuvres started appearing from somewhere magical behind the head chef. Eating these four little dishes of delightful food and sipping champagne in the middle of the galley with the two most important food and beverage people on the entire ship in the middle of busy dinner service while waiters and chefs buzzed around us with trays full of food felt special and slightly surreal. Soon we were heading for our home for the evening, the famous round table. This beautiful furniture is made even more special by a press of a button where the whole party becomes wrapped in shimmering drapes, creating a luxurious enclave separated from the main restaurant, the perfect setting for the delights to come. And those that don't like surprises had better press the stop button now, as there's no menu to peruse. You are left at the mercy of the head chef and his gastronomic imagination, which starts impressively and gets better with each course. Wine is of course included, selected by the maitre d' and his finest sommeliers. Each course is presented to the table by an army of waiters who land your dish in perfect unison with the other 11 guests. It's a fine piece of culinary theatre and it adds to the grandoir feel to the experience. If you feel uncomfortable by making small talk with strangers you have only just met, it gets easier after the first few minutes in the galley and you'll soon be laughing and socialising like old friends. Although be warned, this is probably not the dining experience if you like a nice private dinner for two. Each course is explained by the head chef, who after all designed the menu, the dishes and prepared them personally for you. It's such a special experience. The evening ends with a presentation of the photos that were taken earlier and a princess recipe book, signed by the head chef and maitre d'. 
Overall, this was an incredible experience and actually offers good value too when you compare it to other chef's table evenings offered by other cruise lines. Even though at the end, so full of food and wine you'll be, you'll need a forklift to transport you back to your stateroom. That's an extra cost. I'm kidding, there's no forklifts. So there we have it. This brand new ship has a plethora of dining options, some brand new, some classic favourites, and we hope we've given you an idea of what you can expect when you sail on Sky Princess. We would always recommend you plan ahead and pre-book as many of the premium dining evenings as you can, online, prior to boarding, as they can get booked up and you don't want to be disappointed. Thank you for watching. Please give this guide a thumbs up if you found it useful, leave us a comment, and please consider subscribing, as we have much more Princess content to come, and lots more about Sky. And if it's made you feel hungry, you are now free to go and raid the fridge. Bon appétit! Thank you.